Let's uh, now connect with Ashish uh, Goa, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Heidelberg Cement, joins us live from New Delhi. Ashish, good to have you back on ET now. Thank you for joining us. Let me first start with the monsoon assessment. This time around, most of the parts of Central India and North India have received rainfall, but rainfall has come in the month of September. How exactly has that, or that will change the dynamics of the cement sector? August and September, Nikunj, not uh, really September, we saw uh, huge rains in, uh, heavy rains, sorry, in MP and UP uh, in August and Sept uh, in August more than in September. And that's why there was a little bit of slack demand in August. Uh, transport was affected very badly. Uh, but in September, the demand has picked up quite a bit and we've been able to sell about 20% higher than what we sold in August. So that's a, uh, that's a good, good uh, movement for us. Uh, and overall, even if you were to take uh, the effect of the monsoon or not effect of the monsoon, I just want to give you a figure here. When I was in <coughs> Bhopal on Saturday, I met some bureaucrats and ministers, and I was amazed to find out that the agricultural growth uh, year on year for Madhya Pradesh has been 18.9%. Uh, that's unprecedented in not only in Madhya Pradesh, but overall in India. And that's because they were not really, uh, depending on the rains, their irrigation system has improved so much. So, and the agricultural growth is uh, astounding. And this will lead to your, you know, economic uh, upturn coming in uh, states like Madhya Pradesh. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, for me, the monsoon is over now, uh, or more or less over, uh, in most parts where we sell. And going forward, we should come back to the months of October, November, December, which are generally, uh, in cement sector, the best months. Mr. Goya, what about the other side of the coin? Um, you know, what impact have you had, and or rather foresee on your margins, because of the recent diesel price increase, as well as the railway freights? Well, okay, uh, we, we have had an impact. Exactly uh, the number I may not be able to tell you, but it will be uh, roughly about, you know, 6% uh, in terms of uh, overall impact. And that would mean uh, that we have to pass on, the, on this, this uh, price increase to the customers, uh, which we have started doing. Uh, we have taken some price increases and we are going to take some more price increases in the near future. What's the so point? I don't see an impact coming out of this. Right. Uh, but, you know, previously we have had uh, other uh, reasons for margins coming down, and we've not been able to pass it on fully to the customers. So, therefore, there will be an, somewhat of an impact in margins, but I don't think it's going to be uh, tremendously significant. Fair point. What's the quantum of the price increase that you would undertake? Well, various markets, uh, uh, different, so between 2 rupees and 4 rupees a bag kind of uh, increase initially. And going forward, uh, some more increases are going to be are in the making. Rashish, is the Indian cement company in a sweet spot? Because globally, coal prices have come down. Locally, raw material pressure, which was, which was, very, which was a big headwind for you in 2011, that seems to be coming down. And if I look at the rural demand, the rural cement demand is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it is. And, you know, the reasons, you know, agricultural growth rate, etc., has been amazing. And therefore, the rural sector is growing at a huge pace. Uh, yeah, we have, been, we have seen some uh, relief in terms of coal prices because international coal prices have dropped uh, quite a lot. Uh, but uh, for us, it's not a major thing because we are landlocked. And we have to depend on the Indian coal, uh, otherwise the freight cost kills us. Uh, but uh, otherwise, in terms of other raw material costs, except diesel, uh, which has gone up and freight goes, keeps on increasing. Uh, we saw an increase in February and again we see now. So I don't know the logic where we are going to control inflation. And so ultimately, you know, these prices the customers will have to bear, as we are bearing in terms of coal, power, uh, railways everywhere. Mr. Goha, you just talked about a 2 to 3 rupees per bag hike that you would undertake. How soon could that be? Would it be this month itself? Yeah, yeah, it's immediate. 
Hmm. All right. So if you could give me a ballpark estimate of what would you land up doing in terms of a calendar year end performance when it comes to your realizations after taking into account the price hike that you would undertake now. I would love to, but we don't give guidance, so we'll have to pass that question. Hmm. Ashish, now what uh, derives demand and supply for any, any commodity uh, is capacity and availability. Now, what my understanding is that the Indian cement sector between 2006 to 2009 was clearly in an expansion mode and now capacities have kicked in. When do you see a fresh wave of capacity expansion in the Indian cement sector would given, we will kick in? Because if, if I look at the dynamics of cement sector, the dynamics are uh, quite uh, interesting and quite encouraging. Uh, indeed, but Nikun, there is one critical factor missing there. That's the prices of cement bags. Uh, in today's pricing scenario, I don't think anyone can come up with an expansion. Uh, the little homework that we have done, <coughs> the prices should be in the range of 400 rupees per bag for anyone to come and make a greenfield project. Greenfield projects, as I'm told, is going to be costing around $140 to $160 a ton. And that's quite a lot of money. And to make a return on equity or return on investments, which is meaningful for anyone, the prices should be anywhere between 375 and 400 rupees per bag. Mm. So unless we see prices moving up significantly, I don't expect any investments to come up you know, in a major manner. Yeah? We may have a few uh, expansions here or there, but it won't be a wave as we saw between 2006 and 2009. Ashish, the industry or the cement industry in the past has been criticized for cartelization and I know you have your thoughts there. I'm sorry, you, I, I didn't get, get your nickname. You know, uh, my question is that uh, the industry in the past has been criticized for cartelization and I know you, ha you have your thoughts there. Yeah, I, from the time we've come, we've come to India in 2006, from the time we've come, we've never seen any cartelization of any sort. And whatever has happened on the past, of course, I don't have comments to. In a fragmented con uh, industry like ours, you know, where there are more than 50 players, I don't know how cartelization can happen. Uh, but if uh, the CCI has come up with some reports, I'm sure there must be uh, the players who have been affected are fighting a case and they are saying there is no such case. Uh, so I would tend to believe that there is no cartelization because I have seen none.